I think music is a way of expressing emotion. And to me, those chords, to me, they, they go right to my soul somehow. They go to my heart. Hello and welcome everyone to our interview with the member of the week at the Northern New Jersey AGO. Our member we'll be interviewing today is Dean June Murano Murray. Welcome, June. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, June, could you tell us a little bit about how you got into music and specifically how you got into playing the organ? Well, actually, um, my father was a pianist. Uh, he was my first teacher, really an excellent musician. So I just naturally practiced a lot. I enjoyed piano. He was classically trained, but also spent a lot of time in jazz, too. My sister and I had sort of had to do both growing up. It was just in the family. It was in the house all the time. Music was always playing, even live music. My father would have sometimes jazz musicians come over and, and they would play Although we had to play that, it really wasn't my favorite. I really preferred the classical. And then I wound up, I was accepted into Manhattan School of Music, and I got two degrees there um, in piano and in accompanying. But in the meantime, when I was uh, starting at Manhattan, I had been playing for a chorus, and the conductor of the chorus had also conducted the chorus in his Armenian church and asked me if I would come and play the masses on Sunday morning. And I did that for four years on a little tiny electronic Hammond organ that was about this big. And um, he would shut the pedals off for me because I had not a clue what to do with them. And um, after four years, I, I thought, you know, I, li I like this idea, but I need to move on. And I wound up then in a Presbyterian church in Edgewater with a small choir of my own. It was still an electronic organ, but it was bigger. And so I I just stayed with it. I loved, loved the minister. I, I just loved, loved the whole thing of it. Stayed there for 13 years, and then I moved on to a different church. Each one has sort of been an improvement over the one before. Mm, wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it was really the positions and the jobs that brought you into the world of the organ. Um, is there anything particular that you enjoy about the instrument specifically? Well, you know, with each church, the first several were electronic organs. You know, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. But when I got married and I we had our two children, I really didn't want to be so committed and be going to meetings and whatever. They were tiny and all of that. And so then I did a lot of subbing because then I could just go out on Sunday morning. My husband would be here to take care of the kids. I didn't have to worry about babysitting and all of that. And that's when I really started hearing pipe organs because up until then it was mostly electronic. I was like, wow. I, first of all, I was a little scared because I, there were a lot more things on it than had been on the electronic organs. The sound was, was better. Um, some churches better than other churches, but every week I was someplace else, be it Protestant or Catholic or whatever. I just... I don't know. I just liked it. I liked the whole idea of it. And um, and it brought in some extra money, uh, which was always, you know, that's always helpful. So that's basically how it happened. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's such a great instrument. Um, okay, so could you share some of the highlights of your work in the field of music generally or in your in your current position, some of your proudest moments? I think going to Manhattan School of Music really solidified a lot of things for me. I really loved the school and I uh, subsequently wound up on the faculty there. I was there for 34 years. In fact, this past September is when I finally decided to step down for a, a bunch of reasons, but COVID really had a lot to do with that. But I was an opera coach. My bachelor's degree is in piano, but my master's degree was in accompanying, um, at that time, vocal and instrumental accompanying. I loved the instrumental, but I seemed to be getting more work from the vocal. Plus, I had the church on the side, and I did whatever music things really came my way. I loved being there. I really did. About five years ago, I added William Patterson University. I'm on the coaching staff there as well. 
and although they do, or they are doing some opera, I really work mostly on the song repertoire with students. And then ultimately they gave their recital, which um, if I've been their coach all those years, then I had to play that. I also was part of a forehand and two piano team. I did a lot, of, a lot of duets with my partner, John Falcone, with Manhattan School for 15 of us. I think there were 15 that year, went over to Taiwan and we taught and we performed. And that was a very, very exciting thing. I had never been to an Asian country. Some of those children were so talented and so amazingly prepared. And this is many years ago now. This is, I just enjoyed going to that country so much that that really was a highlight. And of mm-hmm. course, getting married, we have two adopted children from, uh, from Korea, actually. It turned out my daughter was quite talented and we've done uh, performances. In fact, we even did one for one of the uh, AGO concerts last year. One live in River Edge, and then the one that's now online or was online. I don't know if it's still there. It's still but, there. Um, yes. The, oh, it's um, okay. okay. minor, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did perform with Melissa on on my daughter um, on that. So of course those were those are all highlights, but those are more personal highlights than than musical. But uh, with my partner, we, we did uh, wind up performing at Merkin Concert Hall. We did our own recital as a result of something else that we had done. And, you know, that's sort of what happens, the word of mouth and meet more people and you wind up with more opportunities. So I consider myself, I guess, more musician than I do organist because I haven't spent 98% of my time in the organ. Uh, I've spent most of my time just doing all sorts of music things Mm -hmm. and I like that I like the variety but I do wish I could pedal better (laughs) (laughs) don't don't we all I mean there's one of the amazing things is it just never ending amount that you can learn at the end (laughs) okay um moving on do you have a favorite composer or era of music and if so why do you prefer them or I would say that I am a romantic. I like my Brahms and Rachmaninoff and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I like it all. Uh, music is music, and I, I, I like really all the all the eras. Why do you find yourself particularly drawn to that era, either musically or just personally? If you'd be willing to share, I think music is a way of expressing emotion, and to me, those chords. Even and even like WC, you know, those chords, those harmonies, first of all, they revert a lot back to the, the jazz that my father always taught. And I, I mean, I was young when I was learning ninth and 11th and 13th chords. My father was very strict on, on that, that that was the real basic of learning music. Mm-hmm. And he would give me weird things like, you know, OK, play me F ninth sharp 11th flat 13th or something you know and you'd have to go hunt and peck and figure out what you were doing it was great training I loved the sounds of those chords I I loved the major seventh chord was like my favorite and I think you don't really necessarily get that in Bach or or that era but as you move on and especially in the impressionistic stuff you really hear those and to me they they go right to my soul somehow they go to my heart Whereas other composers, I enjoy, but they, I don't know how to explain it, but somehow it, it just goes inside of me. And I've always felt that I played it better when I was younger. You, you know, you play all the eras, you do some Mozart, some Haydn, some Beethoven, some whatever. But um, I kind of rushed through that <laughs> because I wanted to get to the Chopin or the whatever. Mm-hmm. It was just sort of a natural inclination, and I'd say it never died. Mm-hmm. That's still me. <laughs> I think you explained it really well, actually. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Um, if you had to offer some advice to organists starting out in their career, what would you share with them? Well, I feel most of the churches, it seems to me now, one size fits all. You have to play, you have to conduct. You have to know how to work with singers. You have to know how to diction, how to uh, have the, your your soloist or your singers express the text well. Um, it's a whole potpourri of things. 
And I think just to sit and practice the organ all day, I, I think that's not probably where you're going to wind up, certainly not in the beginning year. I think it's more important to really know how to read, sight read, count, know what the chords are, um, know how to improvise. Oh, that's the other thing. My father, we had to do that too. We had to do on, of course, the, all of it was on the piano, but, but I think um, it's so important now because a lot of these churches don't hire one person just to conduct and another person just to um, just play the organ or two people to play the organ and at some of the bigger churches where they have more than one person. It really is, you're really kind of the master of all of it. And I find some things we do better than other things. Because of my training at Manhattan in the opera and the singers working, I feel like I am pretty good at that. I feel like I can, I can handle that I'm more afraid to play a Bach partita with 40 million <laughs> pedals. You know what I mean? But I think that's what happens. Um, I, I think you're naturally more inclined or you have more experience or whatever. You're a little better in some areas, but you have to be good enough to be able to do it all. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're, you're going to struggle more. Mm-hmm. Right. So okay. that's really what I would advise broaden yourself and see what all the requirements are um, to be able to do something reasonably successfully and then concentrate on a little bit of everything. Hmm. So what brought you to the AGO and how, how did you come to go deeper into the membership as a leader? Well, I got into the AGO, not in the chapter that I'm in now. This, when I was living in Edgewater, which was after I had just finished college. And I moved out of my parents' house and took a little apartment in Edgewater because that's where my second church job was. Uh, and I was able to practice over there because I moved out, but I didn't have a camp. I met Alan Seaver, who was a very well-known organist. He played at the West End Collegiate Church in New York for many years and also I think it's called the Stephen Wise Synagogue he played there he lived in New Jersey not far from where I was living I took an organ lesson when I got the the Protestant job I took an organ lesson because I didn't know what I I didn't know what I was doing I'd never had an organ lesson before he was the dean of the chapter at that time it was called the Northern Valley Regional I think they called it Northern Valley Regional Chapter and he told me about it. I had never heard of an AGO. And he invited me to come. I did. I joined. And from there, eventually, that chapter dissolved into the North New Jersey chapter. Once my children were little, I kind of didn't go anymore. And then I wound up rejoining. And then I wound up being on the membership committee. And then this past year, the officials were changing. They had finished out their terms. And they asked me if I would be dean. I was subdean first, um, which made me a little nervous because, like I said, I'm really not a 100% organist. And I thought, well, you know, should I really do this? And then I thought, well, why not? Let, let me give it a shot. And that really just started in September. So I'm, I'm kind of new with it. And uh, it's, of course, different from normally because of all this online stuff and uh, making programs and trying to find ideas and, and whatever. And uh, I'm learning as I go. But that's how it will happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And last question. Mm-hmm. Could you briefly describe the instrument that you have at your current position and its history? Um, I don't know that much about it. It's an Austin three-manual pipe organ. It's rather nice, especially for the space. It's a beautiful church, um, mostly all Tiffany windows inside. And it's not so huge, so the organ really sounds nice in there. It really, and it's a very nice acoustic. It was put in in 1978, although the church, I think, started in 1850, 55, something like that. Um, And there was a different organ, and at some point there was a fire, and then there was another organ, and I wasn't, of course, part of any of that. But that's the basic history. Uh, This organ went in in 1978 that much I know. And um, the only real problem we've had when I first started there 
there were squirrels that had gotten in and they were up there in the chamber damaging and knocking over pipes and doing all kinds of weird things. And uh, it took a while to get that straightened out. But um, but the real main thing that happened was the blower went. It was 100 year, 101 years old, the blower. So it's amazing it even lasted as long as it did. It must have been put in with one of those other organs. But in any event, that was totally replaced. We have, it's brand new. The church always valued their music. They've always had poor uh, paid soloists there. They've always had music events. I like it there. I like I like it very much. Well, we're at the end of our interview. Thank you so much for being with us, and I'll see you at the next meeting. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.